This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, the War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman, and it's good to be back home here in New York with Juan Gonzalez. And welcome back, Amy. <laughs> President Obama has unveiled an international tax overhaul that he says will close loopholes exploited by American corporations. Speaking at the White House Monday, Obama called the proposed changes a down payment on broader tax reform. So the steps I am announcing today will help us deal with some of the most egregious examples of what's wrong with our tax code and will help us strengthen some of these other efforts. It's a down payment on the larger tax reform we need to make our tax system simpler and fairer and more efficient for individuals and corporations. The Obama plan would curb the practice known as deferral, where corporations avoid taxes by indefinitely holding revenues outside the United States. It would also impose new regulations on corporations that use international subsidiaries to shift funds to offshore tax havens and claim unwarranted tax, foreign tax credits. Business lobbyists have already launched a campaign against the proposals, saying they'll threaten American jobs. The tax changes are the latest in a series of proposals billed by the Obama administration as a dramatic overhaul of the deregulated financial system that brought about the economic collapse. Recent figures underscore the severity of the toll on the U.S. economy. Last week, the International Monetary Fund said global banks and financial institutions have lost an estimated $4.1 trillion during the financial crisis. Of that total, $2.7 trillion in losses originated in the United States. In another report, the IMF also projected the cost to U.S. taxpayers for the Wall Street bailout and other economic spending should be far higher than government officials have claimed. IMF analysts say the taxpayer tab could come out to $1.9 trillion over the next five years. The figure amounts to around $62,000 for every U.S. citizen, $6,200 for every U.S. citizen and just over 13% of annual gross domestic product. We're joined right now in the Firehouse studio by William Greider, veteran journalist with a career spanning over four decades, national affairs correspondent at The Nation magazine, author of several books, including his latest, Come Home America, The Rise and Fall and Redeeming Promise of Our Country. Welcome to Democracy Thanks, now. Amy. Thank you. How did this happen, the economic crisis? I think it was like a series of big waves coming at this country for really 20 plus years, some of which I wrote about uh, rather forlornly, forlornly trying to say, do you know what's happening to us? And uh, those waves were ignored and in many cases launched by what I call the governing elites, the people in power, not just government, but finance, business. Republicans and Democrats alike, um, and either out of blindness or, or a kind of craven uh, unwillingness to deal with reality, those, those waves have crashed over us. And I'm talking about trade, I'm talking about the, the militarism that drives our f spending and our adventures overseas, um, the weakness, the weakening condition of the U.S. economy. And on top of that is a financial system that is wildly inflated in value, in power, and, and all those things. And here we are. I mean, all of that is now either crashing or subsiding. And, and uh, you know from my book, my, my belief is, and I feel it strongly, is that we're just at the beginning of a really long, hard passage in which Americans, like it or not, are, have to adjust to these new realities. And, and, and I'm an American-born optimist. I think that can actually be good, not just for the world at large, but for our country in the long run, if, if we face reality. It's, and, and if we keep denying reality, it will get harder and harder. Uh, you've called the way that President Obama responds uh, to this, the current uh, crisis a, uh, the great moral test of his administration, not merely uh, the, yeah. an economic test. Why a moral test? Well, um, because in the financial sphere, which is where the big bucks have been flowing, he is rewarding the people who caused this. And very specifically, we can name names, can't we? We know, I mean, the Americans at large know the names of these big financial firms and banks. 
And people know in their guts, you've been traveling, you've heard this, I'm sure, a thousand times. People know this is wrong. You don't have to explain it to them. They know that, and it doesn't matter what their politics, uh, their labels are, left, right, whatever. They all, people everywhere know it's wrong to reward the malefactors who caused this catastrophe. And at the same time, be less... Uh, ardent about doing something for people all across America who are really in in uh, in uh, desperate times. You know, it's interesting. When I was getting ready for work this morning and watching television, the networks, uh, one of the pundits was saying, you know, things are doing much better now. Goldman Sachs is really doing better. But talk about what that means and what does it mean now for Goldman Sachs to be doing better? The big picture is this. Wall Street's inflation, inflated values, inflated profits, inflated salaries, all of that has, is, is, is in deflation now. It's literally subsiding. A huge amount of wealth, trillions of dollars, has been lost. That's not coming back, in, in my judgment. The president and his administration and the, the, the fight figures in Wall Street are acting as though they think they can pump it back up and get everything sort of back to normal, albeit with fewer financial firms, and some of them are now extinct. I think that's wrong, and, and actually a lot of experts who are more expert than I have been saying the same thing. It's not going to happen. Forget the morality, it's not going to happen. So then the question becomes, who's going to cover the losses? <laughs> And what the government has been doing, both on, first under Bush and now under Obama, is, is, is assert that they have to transfer those losses from the private balance sheets of a Goldman Sachs, J.P. Morgan Chase, a Citigroup, Bank of America, make your own list, the biggest and most allegedly most influential uh, firms, to the public balance sheet. And... and, and, and uh, they're, they're trying to do that. Unfortunately, the public anger is so intense and so general that they're, that they're reluctant to take that, that next step. And, and I don't trust Congress to, to hold its ground on much of anything, but at the moment, Congress really doesn't want to hear from this president, give us another couple hundred billion dollars because we, we've still got to make these balance sheets of these private firms um, whole Meanwhile, the, the, what I call the big dogs of banking, which are those same firms I named, are pushing the president. I mean, it's, this is a really intense and important power struggle. Who's going who's gonna to take charge? And, and Jamie Dimon from J.P. Morgan and the guy from Goldman Sachs are acting as though, what crisis? Look at our quarterly returns. Everything is back to normal. Get out of our way. We don't want any more of your money. In fact, we'll give some of the money back. I said in the nation, this arrogance is breathtaking even for Wall Street bankers. I mean, it really is when you think about it. This new president who's got all these important things that he wants to accomplish is just getting a shove, a really hard shove from the people he's helping. And, and he is being tested by this moment, because it seems to me if he doesn't respond to that and stand up to them and assert the government's emergency powers, then every other power center will take his measure and decide they can have this guy. Well, this week, uh, the administration has to announce the results of its stress test on the 19 biggest banks deemed uh, too big to fail. Uh, and obviously all of these bankers are very nervous about what the impact will be on this. But then suddenly uh, yesterday the president uh, announced he also wants to begin uh, eliminating all these tax loopholes uh, with some of these same banks have been involved in sheltering huge amounts of profits overseas. Uh, your sense of whether this is part of this battle where he's put out a, a, a pawn or a, or a rook saying, hey, I'm going after your offshore taxes at the same time that I'm trying to figure out a way to pr 